But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared to the creation that I have created Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, that I have created my beloved Rasul, my beloved messenger, whom I love very dearly. From that moment on, when the entire creation was informed that there will be a Rasul that will be sent from that moment when the Noor of Sayyidina Rasul Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam was created. From that moment, the creation has been awaiting the arrival of Rasulullah Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. People have been waiting for the arrival of Rasulullah. The Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam's name has been mentioned in previous scriptures and books. In the Tawrat as well as the Injil as well as the Zubur. Every scripture, every Sahifa that was revealed to every other Prophet. The Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam's arrival has been mentioned in there. Scriptures and books have been waiting. The entire creation has been waiting. Animals were waiting. The seas were waiting. The mountains were waiting. The Aflaq, the skies, the heavens, the sun and the moon and the stars. All of the creation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has been waiting for the arrival of Rasulullah Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. Just as people are waiting in the four corners of the earth that every single year they await the arrival of the new year and they spend that last night waiting for the arrival of the new year. As soon as it hits midnight, they begin to celebrate the arrival of the new year. When it was time for Sayyidina Rasul Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam to be born, that wait was over for the entire creation. When the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam on the 12th of Rabiul Awwal, on the year of the elephant, 1400 years ago, when Rasulullah Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam was born, and, and that moment arrived that Rasulullah Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam lit the entire heavens, and the palaces of Sham were seen. And the mother of the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam says, Ka'annahu kharaja minni shihabun. That when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born, Ka'annahu kharaja minni shihabun, A star emanate from me, Adaat lahu al-ardu kulluha, And it lit up the entire earth, Kulluha, all of it, That every single element that is found in this earth was lit up with the nur of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And the entire creation celebrated on that day. We were talking about the signs and the miracles that took place. What were the miracles that took place at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi What were they marking? It was marking the significance of the birth, but at the same time, all of these miracles and supernatural things that are beyond our comprehension. And if you pick up, pick up the books of Seerah, and if you pick up, pick up the books of a hadith, pick up Imam Abu Nu'im's Dalailun Nabuwa, pick up Imam Bayhaqi's Dalailun Nabuwa, pick up Imam Sayyuti's Khasais al Kubra, pick up Shaykh Abdul Haq Muhaddi Sidelwi's Madarij al Nabuwa. Whatever book of hadith you pick up, and whatever book of Seerah you pick up, pick up Hafiz ibn Kasir al Bidaya wa Nihaya. Whatever book you pick up, look in the chapter on the Wilada, on the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. It not only talks about the significance of the birth, but all of the miracles that took place. What were all of these miracles? The miracles that were happened were actually the celebration of the entire creation on the arrival of Rasulullah They were the celebration of the entire creation for the arrival of Sayyidina Muhammad the greatest gift to the entire creation by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what it was. It was a celebration. And in celebration, if you look at the riwayat, Sayyidah Amina radiallahu ta'ala anha, the blessed mother of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. The women that were gathered in the house of Sayyidina Amina radiallahu ta'ala anha, where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born. The people who were present at that time, what did they witness? They all describe, they all describe that the rivers and the seas, they began to overflow with joy and happiness. They flooded with joy and happiness. The mountains seemed bigger. They stretched themselves because of happiness and joy. People saw birds and white doves circumambulating the entire skies out of joy and happiness. Animals were seen running from the east and the west. 
giving congratulations to one another. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the entire angels that decorate the heavens because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has arrived. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the angels open the doors of the entire heavens, open the doors of Jannah and let the fragrance of paradise perfume the entire heavens because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has arrived. In those rivayat you will see because of the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave a gift to the entire heavens. What was the gift? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created pillars made of emeralds and pearls and he stuck them in the heavens. When the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam went on Mi'raj Sharif on the night journey of Laylatul Mi'raj when he was invited to visit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam described seeing those pillars that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had created in the heavens because of the happiness of the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Not only that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decorated the entire trees that were found in paradise with the name of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam describes that when I went to Laylatul Miraj and I was taken into paradise, he goes that I saw that the entire trunks on the entire trees found in Jannah, all of them were decorated with my name next to Allah's name. He said, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Pick up the book of Imam Sayyuti al Khasai al Qubra. He has a whole chapter on this. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put the name of the Prophet next to his. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam describes that I passed the trees of Jannah and I saw upon every leaf of the trees that were found in paradise there was my name written on it next to the name of, the, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam says that I passed by the heavens and every heaven that I went past I saw my name written with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then not only that the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said he said, I saw upon the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala written maktuban, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decorated the entire heavens and even his arsh in the celebration of the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And if anyone says, no, this is about mi'raj, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invited the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam and that's why everything was decorated. The name of the Prophet was written on the arsh even before Adam alayhi salam was created. This is why the entire creation celebrated upon the arrival of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. The angels were told on the night Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born that go be present at the time when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born and welcome him into the dunya. And not only that, 70,000 Hur, the beautiful, sacred women of Jannah were also present at the time Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born and they were congratulating one another. And at the time of delivery, they weren't just the women of Makkah present, or the relatives of Sayyidina Amir radiallahu ta'ala anha that were present. But there were sacred and blessed women like Sayyidina Maryam alayhi salam. Sayyidina Maryam, the mother of Prophet Isa alayhi salam, she was present at the delivery of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Asiya, the foster mother of Prophet Musa alayhi salam, was also present at the time of delivery of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam. Sayyidina Hawa, Sayyidina Hawa alayhi salam, the mother of the entire human race, she was present at the time that Rasulullah was born. Pick up Imam Qastalani's Al Mawahibul Laduniya. Imam Qastalani was a contemporary of Imam Jalaluddin Sayyuti, alayhi rahma, whose name we heard before. Imam Qastalani was regarded in the same rank as Imam Sayyuti, and both of them were the students of Imam Ibn Hajar al Asqalani. And Imam Qastalani has also written a commentary on Sahih Bukhari, which is a well accepted and well known commentary on Sahih Bukhari. These people were authorities and he mentions 
all of these riwayat and so as Imam Abu Naim as well as Imam Sayyuti they all mention these riwayat in their books of seerah and especially this about Sayyidah Maryam being present Sayyidah Hawa and Sayyidah Asya being present may Allah be pleased with all of them is mentioned al mawahib al of Imam Kastalani Rahimahullah Ta'ala and many other miracles were seen sorry I'm not feeling well my throat is not good I have a bad cough and a bad cold but inshallah if time permits me and my voice permits me we'll carry on the dhikr of the beloved Habib and the miracles that took place they will, these will never finish the entire night will finish but these things will never finish but what I want to come to is the people celebrate New Year's Day for people celebrate the New Year's Day for many reasons some people mark the arrival of the New Year's Day they see it as the beginning of a new year or they are in hope of something new that will occur in that year they are in hope that there will be some changes in the new year that is coming and they look forward to it and they celebrate it sometimes the previous year for some people is not a good year it is a bad year for them so they celebrate the arrival of the new year to look towards some hope that there will be light there will be goodness those people who were suffering in the previous year oppression darkness they celebrate the arrival of the new year in the hope that this new year will bring some light for them the darkness that they have been in in the previous year they celebrate the arrival of the new year in the hope that this new year will bring some sort of light in their life some people mark this year with reflection with the fakur with the dabbur that my previous year what mistakes did i make that i need to correct myself so they look forward to the new year in order to set themselves some new year's resolutions in order to rectify those things which all achieve those things that what which they couldn't achieve in the previous year so people mark the coming of the new year in various different ways but when rasulullah came why is it that the entire creation celebrated the arrival of the prophet because in the hope and they knew that the birth of the Prophet والسلام, the Mawlid of Rasulullah that this moment would not only mark the arrival of a new year but rather the birth of the Prophet والسلام, will mark a new era in, in, in the entire history the arrival of the Prophet والسلام, will write a new chapter in history the arrival of the Prophet والسلام, will leave a new legacy which will be remembered until Yawm Al Qayyamah. That is one of the reasons why the entire creation celebrated the birth of Rasulullah in the hope that the darkness that the entire dunya was immersed in, the ignorance that, ignorance that the entire dunya was immersed in, people were lost in idol worship, people were worshipping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Kaabatullah. The house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as narrated in the books of Sirah that the Kaaba also celebrated the arrival of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam that the entire idols the 360 idols that were inhabiting the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which was created which was made and built by Adam alayhi salam purely and sincerely for the worship of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which was an indication towards the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the Prophet alayhi salatu was born, those 360 idols that were inhabited by the idols, those 360 idols that were inhabiting the Holy Kaaba, all fell flat on their faces when the Prophet alayhi salatu was was born to mark the fact that that person has arrived who will cleanse the Holy Kaaba and will cleanse the Holy Sanctuaries from idolatry and shirk. And when we find at the conquest of Makkah al Mukarramah, when the Prophet والسلام, migrated back from Madinah al Munawwara and came back into Makkah al Mukarramah, when the Prophet والسلام, pointed his staff, his blessed staff, at every idol that was inside the Holy Kaaba, 
and he was reciting kul ja al haqq wa zahq al batil inna al batila kana zahuka the truth has come and falsehood will perish indeed falsehood would perish every time rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam would recite that verse and point towards the idol every single idol fell in that way flat on their faces that prophecy was fulfilled when the prophet ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam was born and what people saw what they experienced with the spiritual coming of us with the prophet ali sallallahu physically coming and spiritually enlightening the dunya the people experienced it on the conquest of makkah and the prophecy was fulfilled in the same way when the sulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was born what else happened the persian emperor kisra the 14 minarets of his palace or the 14 balconies of his palace they collapsed with the birth of rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alaihi wasallam this was an indication that those kingdoms or those kings that built their empires upon oppression and injustice that person has arrived who will remove all types of oppression and injustice those kingdoms that were built upon the blood of the innocent and the sweat of the innocent and those kings who regarded themselves as untouchables and regarded themselves as gods upon earth their kingdoms and they themselves will collapse and we find that when the sulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam was born and he arrived he announced his nabuwa after 40 years of nabuwa the prophet alayhi salatu wasallam wrote maktoob's letters to every single king that was found in his time to the nija najashi to the abyssinian kings towards the roman emperor kaiser and towards the persian emperor kisra when the prophet alayhi salatu wasallam wrote the letter and sent it to the persian emperor what did he do as soon as he read the name of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and on that letter when it said that i am inviting you towards the oneness of allah and i am the prophet of allah what was the reaction of kisra he tore the letter of the prophet alayhi salatu wasallam he tore that letter in arrogance rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he was informed of what he did the prophet alayhi salatu wasallam said oh kisra just as you tore the letter of the prophet allah will shred your kingdom into pieces a time came when the entire kingdom was torn into pieces by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that prophecy was also fulfilled when the prophet was born his entire balconies and minarets collapsed this indicated towards the fact that those kingdoms that are built upon oppression they will collapse with the arrival of rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam and it happened when rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam began to spread his light began to spread his light and the final prophecy or that miracle that took place i know i've gone over my time and i'm sorry that i've taken more time the last prophecy that i want to mention and this is relevant to today and i know uh, brother george galloway uh, will also be talking about this we see the ard of sham the bilad of sham the city of syria the, the country of syria we see the blessed lands of palestine jordan all of these are regarded as bilad of sham the birth of the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam has a message for us in regards to that sacred place when the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam was born <coughs> what was <coughs> one of the things that happened when the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam was born the entire earth was lit up and people whilst in makkah al mukarramah they witnessed the palaces of sham whilst they were in makkah al mukarramah they saw the palaces of sham what happened in the life of rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam this was an indication towards the fact that my light my nur my message my islam my propagation my teachings my values they will spread towards that blessed land and we find in the time of sayyidina umar bin khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu that islam spread towards that side and most of the people entire place they became muslims and this became part of the islamic empire that prophecy was fulfilled but then there was another indication and this was an indication towards the people to come until the day of judgment that oh people this is a blessed land don't forget this land there will be a time 
when this land again will be in darkness, it will be in dhul. And the verse which I recited before you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we sent upon you a light, that we spent, sent upon you a light and a clear book. And this light and clear book guides people out of darkness. In now dhulm and oppression, the meaning of dhulm in the Arabic language of oppression is also darkness. This is why the Prophet said on day of judgment, the person who is a zalim, who is an oppressor, his zulm on the day of judgment will come as darkness for him on the day of judgment. And the Prophet used the word dhul. Dhulm in the Arabic language means darkness. The Prophet indicated towards the fact that this blessed land will once again be immersed in darkness and oppression. We find innocent people, innocent children being killed for no reason. No reason whatsoever. Just by people wanting to fulfill their own egos, fulfill their own politics, or whatever greed that they have in terms of this materialistic dunya. The Prophet ﷺ indicated towards us that yes, when I was born, the entire earth was illuminated and the palaces of Sham were illuminated for you. One indication is that the deen will spread there. But there will be a time that will come that this entire Bilad of Sham again will be immersed in this darkness. But then again, my light will not be extinguished. As the Quran says, Yuridun and Yutfiu Nur Allahi bi afwahihim. That no one will be able to blow out this light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That this light will never be blown out. O oh people, there will be a time that will come. That there will be a person from my lineage, from my blood, Imam Muhammad Mahdi. He will spread my light towards a bilad sham again. And Prophet Isa alayhi salam will descend again, once again, in those blessed land of Damascus, in that blessed place of sham. Again, he will remove all corruption and darkness. He will remove all oppression. Again, he will spread my message and he will be just and he will spread the message of my Sharia. Again, both of them, Imam Muhammad Mahdi alayhi salam and Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam will spread this light once again in that Bilad of Sham until Yawmul Qayyama will come. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to remember and commemorate the birth of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to connect ourselves with beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasalam once again. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq that on this blessed night to remember those people who are suffering and are in darkness, especially those people in Sham, also the people across the world. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring this new year with a new light for those people who are immersed in oppression or immersed in darkness. May Allah take them out of zulm once again towards a path of light, just as he did with the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam.